what is going on everyone and welcome back to more black desert so today we are going to be going over something that i've been asked a few times and it's just something that you guys can watch i don't think it's going to be a super popular video but we're going to be talking about our 410 cp layout and just going over all the nodes so before i start i want to say that when you pick your nodes i think you guys should pick something that you would use for yourself so what does that mean like if you are cooking if you do a lot of alchemy or gathering into turning these materials into something else um then you should pick the nodes that you think are useful for you and something that will like save you one extra step and so you don't have to gather that uh resource later on but anyway uh these are what i have you don't necessarily have to copy mine but just in case for anyone who's ever been interested um i'll go over everything in like every town but let's start off with the big contribution point um thing so residents i believe you can have one at the you know the manor near heidel i think that one costs 10 as well so yeah so each one has a different amount. I don't actually know how many it is total, but we have one in Serendia. That's where we do a lot of our cooking, uh, cooking and alchemy for everything in the Heidel house. Uh, we have two Balanos ones, um, one in Ilia Island and one in Velia. The Velia one is more for like random stuff. You know how they give you like house furnishing things from events. Uh, this is where I just dump a lot of all of that stuff. Uh, we have a house on Ilia Island. I don't actually know why we have it and uh comma we have the one just for just cooking and stuff down in that region as well but i've had this one in the comma area or just grana because that was before the magnus came out and i was cooking and stuff down there before you could like hot swap transfer everything back through like your storage keeper so i'd have to actually manually be there um so yeah that's that and then we have another 80 cp tied up into farms um I, I actually it's uh 70 so yeah seven old moon fences and then the free one that you get from questing so make sure to do that if you haven't already so that's about like maybe 110 120 points in houses and farms already and okay so let's start off with olvia um because Let's just go into the areas that their game released in. So like Olvia, then Velia, then Serendia, and so on. So Olvia, I only have grape nodes going on. I used to have more stuff connected, but I realized that I don't really need it. And even now with grapes, you do, I think there's a lot on the market that you don't really need them. But this is just one of the nodes that I do use it for cooking every now and then, but it's not really an important one. But I have uh, Olvia connected, and if I were to get rid of them, it's not really a big deal. And the notable nodes over here are the chicken meat and uh, potatoes for me, personally. Also, timbers are pretty good as well. But chicken meat, obviously, I use that to power level my cooking. Um, and plus, you get eggs along with it. Eggs are very, like, a high quality no or thing to get for cooking later on as well um in my opinion timbers or like logs and stuff are high value because when you process them it's low effort and they could sell for a lot plus you use them in a lot of things later on so if i were to rank them on like a tier list of materials um meats you used for cooking are pretty high up there and next is various timbers. You're going to have to look at the market for timbers to figure out which ones are worth it and which ones aren't. Um, but generally, timbers are used for a lot of things, so it's good. But you want to look for quality ones like chicken meat and eggs. Whether you sell it or not, it's not a, um, it'll make a lot of money. Uh, potato nodes, uh, sometimes the price spikes on that. Sometimes it doesn't. And then... I personally have these connected as well. Ancient Stone Chamber, Force of Seclusion. Now, some of these nodes are a little bit different because they have excavations 
and it's a little bit expensive and for like a new player finding ex excavation nodes um are not there by default so you're gonna have to go there talk to an npc spend like 10 energy or something and then it'll give you the node and the reason why you get them is for various traces and traces are important because you'll use them for either alchemy or some like quests and stuff actually need it but mostly it's a crafting thing for endgame a lot of the traces are valuable and i don't particularly have a lot of them but here's where i store mine and then like you can see the prices of them it's uh a bit of silver and overall i would say don't sell traces unless you like really don't use it because eventually you might find yourself crafting and doing alchemy with it later on so being able to get a lot of uh trace nodes or excavation ones is very important and i think it'll be super useful later on and there's actually like a map that i forgot what website it was but it tells you basically all the excavation nodes and you can just figure it out so there's more than one of them you just kind of have to find them every now and then so figure out which traces you might use for crafting and like processing and then just get those so yeah that's basically velia velia has a lot of ores and timbers same with heidel and serendia but I would say the important ones over here are the chicken meat and the egg ones. Um, I personally think iron ore is valuable because you could sell them at higher tiers. Like if you're using iron ore and something else, you could turn it into steel and steel is used for a lot of crafting or you could just sell it and just make some good silver over time. Um, so that's basically Velia in a nutshell. Now, Serendia is a big one because it has a lot of timbers and ores and stuff. So up in the north area, I have this one, which is basically copper, iron. This one is pumpkins, which is, I think, one of the few that have uh, pumpkins and cooking honey. Now, these are used for cooking, obviously, and cooking honey doesn't really have too many nodes. So I've just had this one going on for many years now i obviously sell the cooking honey or use it if i have too much of it and it is something that you might want to consider getting i think that's important over the years historically as well uh over here the rest of these are just kind of leftover stuff but let's break this down into like heidel and the glish area let's take this river over here more or less um so over here we have more pumpkins and wheats now, I've had these nodes running for a long time, and a lot of this was before a lot of the materials became abundant on the market. But back in the day, we used to use wheat for, like, beer, and this was before the chicken meat thing was super popular. And so that was the... Basically, beer was the food you used to feed your workers. Uh, pumpkins are pretty used a lot. And for some reason, flax goes really up and down in price a lot. I don't know why, but sometimes it does. And look, there's like over a billion sales on that. And sometimes it goes up past like a thousand silver piece or per. And sometimes it hits the hard minimum. So yeah, the wild spikes are like really random. So that's why I have them. And so for the glitch area, the things you really want here are more of the ores. And one important one is trace of origin. And that's why I have this node here. And I just have a lot of these because you will need origins for various elixirs. I think that's important. Uh, hunting traces aren't as important, but the pink ones are. And Castle Ruins has maple timber. Maple isn't as valuable as it used to be, but in general, as an overall rule, I think timbers are very, or like more valuable than certain other ones. However, with that said, there are nodes over here that these are like high quality, which means they will sell for a lot if processed. However, they do take up kind of a lot of contribution points. So I've been like, these nodes are on and off. And yeah, that's about it. So. I have a lot of timbers here 
and ores are the most important ones here whereas heidel area is more uh, cooking materials and alchemy these are for ores and processing over here is more cooking ores like a mix of everything and let's go into the calpheon area so calpheon is the one that sometimes gets more sometimes i just delete them all because there's a lot of timbers here and mushrooms and various stuff for alchemy and i think calpheon in general is more like a bunch of mixed resources as you guys see there's a lot of timbers and stuff here so ores are like really popular in this area as you know keplin has a lot of stuff as well if you are a beginner i would recommend checking out these three nodes like the dame canyon quarry and the farm over here you have to connect all of these through the hill which is kind of a lot of cp but i believe this gives like coal and a lot more ores and i think that's pretty popular to get early on and pretty useful if you're trying to make like easy money over time if you're just trying to turn like iron and coal into steel and just to sell it i think that is a pretty solid node to get so i have a coal node over here as well and before i used to have more over here but i took them off just because i put them into other things but these are what i have in Alpheon, these two over here, you could connect them to a wheat plantation, I believe, even if you don't have this one. I'm not sure. Do you like usually town nodes are separate, but I don't know if you have to connect this farm to it like from Calpheon. But either way, I had stuff on it anyway. So once again, wheat and barley were the things to make beer back in the day. And now you just use chicken meat. Uh mushrooms. And what is this one? Oh yeah, another excavation. So both Trace of Battle and Forest are very popular. Um, you should probably collect these both. So this one I think would be a must-have. Even if you're a new player, you might want to get this node up and running. And if you don't use the traces, just feel free to sell them. Because you will just make quite a bit of silver over time off of that. And one at Quint Hill. I'm not really sure why I have this. What even is that? Oh, Birch Timber. That one's actually kind of worth something. So that's what I have. Next we're going into down into the trent area now personally i think trent nodes are worth it however i don't think it should be high priority for you to get because these are one of the things that if you have more cp and uh just have like you need something in particular then it's worth it so spirit leaf are worth a lot cedar timber like i think it's going down in price over time but like spirit leaf are worth a lot because they're used for bartering materials obviously and alchemy as well so it's a high item but the cedar timber as <laughs> i have almost half a million just in this node here and another like hundred fifty thousand fur and yeah i think it's worth it plus the one thing that i wanted over time was the cedar sap as you guys know saps in general are very contested on the market you use it for alchemy and elixirs but it's very hard to get if you're not like actively gathering it yourself so usually i would say getting saps on the market is very hard so you're gonna have to do whatever you can to get them off nodes or gathering it yourself so that's why i've had this node running for quite a while as you guys can see a lot of timbers here and then i use them over time so let's look at the market for a second if you look at saps, uh, some of these, <laughs> it really depends what you need. The contested ones are obviously the ones that are basically permanently sold out with, uh, yeah, like over a hundred thousand orders. The chances of you getting it is very low. So yeah, these are the ones that are most popular and hardest to get. So if you will get a node on them as soon as you can, that's the best thing you can do. If there's a lot of them on the market, that means they're not really used a lot. I'm just throwing that out there. So, yeah. Then down we have um, stuff in Grana. So I actually used to have the Star Zen node, mostly for the massive pure magics, but 
nowadays, I feel like I don't need it. The only thing that would be good here is probably the Trace of Death, because that's good. If you are a new, newer player looking to get massive pure magics, nowadays, I think, like, at the time you need them, you're probably around, like, 270, 280 AP or something. Maybe 260, I don't know, but, like, you're basically in the area where you kind of know what you're doing. So, getting massive pure magics is not a bad idea, but then later on you'll realize once you can grind, um, like, Elvia spots, you get them kind of, like, candy. They just drop a lot, so then you eventually take off the node. Um... Once again, over here, we have this because you get a sap and the note or the timber itself is not really the greatest, but the sap is. I had a node in here for more trace of forest, very valuable. And I just didn't want to take out this node because back in the day when I was grinding for the infinite potion, uh, the forest Renaro's area is obviously one of the spots that you go to. And so I have it leveled up to 10. Did it really help me? Not really, I don't think so. But anyway, um, either way, there's an excavation node that's pretty valuable here. Everything else is basically irrelevant. You just need all these to connect and get those. Over here in Old Wisdom Tree, I think we only used to have this tree forest one for like some random timbers and sass, but I didn't feel like I needed it, so I just took it out. Um. Okay, so down in Odraxia... This one is kind of tough because some of these nodes are good, but they're kind of expensive. So Narcion is one with chicken meat and eggs that we talked about that is important. And you want to get it as well as this is like the best hunting spot in the game. So if you do any hunting, you're probably down here. You might as well level up the node, get the thing going anyway. Um, grapes and potatoes over here cooking materials and I'm pretty sure people have the Crypt of Resting Thoughts one just connected for Trace of Battle and obviously Crypt of Resting Thoughts is a, like the highest hardest spot to grind in the game so yeah I, I assume having a maxed out node here slightly increases your chance of getting a Deborah belt so yeah do that if you are super end game but otherwise it's probably not worth it uh, Duvencroon, what do we have? I'm not really sure about this one. I used to have a lot of stuff connected over here because Mithril Ore is very valuable, and I was actually thinking about setting up another node. But when Duvencroon first came out, um, the like yield rate, so when you send your worker out and they bring stuff back, the rate of getting Mithril was actually so awful to the point where it wasn't worth like the 10, 15 CP it took to connect it down there. But if you look at it on the market, hold on, let me reset this. I'm going to be honest, I don't really even like need the ash timber. I'm just processing it so I could use it for something. So if we look at Mithril, this is a very like wanted node or just things like there's so many on the market that you need and that's why i was thinking about actually putting some cp into getting this node over here but it is kind of a lot so if i i don't know how many so i think this is probably three connecting this is like four then here probably like i just know this is a five node one so or five cp node times two so it'd be like 10 13 Maybe like 17 CP to get it, which is not really worth it in my eyes. But if you need Mithril for some reason, this is the place to get it, probably. And maybe there might be a little bit more, but I don't know. Uh, there's an excavation one over here. If you feel like you need it, just connect it to Odraxia and like go up, up, and here. But once again, that's a lot of if you have extra CP you don't know what to do with. I personally connected all the way up here for fur sap it was is it worth it i have no idea if you don't do alchemy no but if you do alchemy getting any sort of saps is very worth it so yeah i had to connect all the way up to garmoth for it is it 
Uh, this one was a very tough one. It's like 5 CP plus the entire connection. So basically, if you don't do alchemy, you don't need this one. Um, and then I used to have this connected over to here and to Shira because it gave Bracken. And then you realize you don't actually need it. I, to be honest, I have no idea what Bracken even makes. I just have a lot of them because it's worth like 14,000. <laughs> and honestly, the yield rate of this, like for sending your workers to get it, it's not really that much. So yeah, that was another reason. Uh, so for Mountain of Eternal Winter, this region, we have basically the Highlands and Jade Starlight connected along with this one. Now, a lot of people have asked me, what it, does this fiery black ore even do? And to be honest, I have no idea. I think it's used for... Actually, I have no idea. I, I'm not even going to guess. But anyway, over here we have another excavation. Uh, Trace of Death and Quartz. I think this is a good one. But again, I don't even think I have enough CP to, or... Like, I don't have enough uh, worker space to connect another one. I'm barely like pushing it with this. So cooking honey, once again, as we talked about, was very popular. Uh, birch timber is pretty good. Monk's branch, uh, the price fluctuates. And I leveled this node up to level 10 because this is the place where you go for your Labresca helmet. Uh, well, gathering the flames to make the Labresca helmet is important. So rough jade and timbers and sap here. So basically, I have timbers. It's actually not that much, but I get a lot of cooking honey, which is good. Um, monk's branch and cedar sap. It's all right. And I'll, I do use it from time to time. That's why I don't have a lot, but something you should think about. Uh, I should probably actually look up what this fiery black ore does, but I don't think it's worth it. If I had three CP, the next thing I would do is probably get this trace of death thingy so what else do we have we talked about basically the entire left half oh i forgot to talk about this one so in port of i have a lot of fish nodes going this has been running for about like three to four years now and every now and then i use them for cooking pet food and that was actually the reason why i have this node it's been going on for like three to four years actually but um yeah, so if you see these nodes, they're actually, like, you get a lot of dried fish. And the bad thing about these nodes are, like, each, like, there and back to deliver their materials takes about, like, a lot of hours. Actually, let me check. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I think they're, like, three hours per cycle. But <laughs> I was always like, okay, so back in the day, picture this four years ago. So feed or like pet food was always sold out because everyone needed it. And I was like, okay, so I'm just going to make my own if I have some like fish. And four years later of fish nodes running at like three hours each, here we are with just a lot of them. So yeah, that's why I have it. They're really cheap nodes, but they take a long time to cycle. And it's not really that much. That's why I assume it's cheap, but... Yeah. Fish nodes. You need pet food? Just buy it off the market. That's how you do it in 2022. Um, What else? Okay, going into the Medaya zone. This one is a lot of expensive nodes, to be honest. So we're connecting most of these to Tariff. And, oh, another pure black stone expired. Feels bad. But... The important ones that we're going for are white cedar saps, um, old tree bark, more maple sap, and just whatever timbers and whatever else is here. So the important ones, unfortunately, are the farthest connections up here. I think the white, uh, white cedar and a maple timber, along with the maple sap and other. So these two nodes, I think, are very important. Uh, everything else you can connect is like more sap. Mm. Zinc ore is probably not as relevant anymore, which is fine. But there's a trace of earth and trace of chaos. Now, trace of earth is worth 
some amount of money. Trace of Chaos is kind of not. And then, obviously, if you're going for tier 9, tier 10 horses, Stonetail Ranch is a pretty big one. You need some nodes if you want to ever make Krogdala horse gear. If you wondered how you make it yourself, this is how you do it. It is Stonetail or, yeah, Stonetail Horse Ranch 3. Let's get all the nodes, level up the node, pick the horse gear you want, and just go find the items and make it. But yeah, a lot of the nodes in this region, particularly the Tariff, is kind of expensive. Plus, you won't have enough worker space, so you have to use some of these from Alta Nova to go down here as well. So I'm pretty sure from Alta Nova, I have like this half connected. So like anything from the Omar Lava Cave and over is Alta Nova connected. And these are a lot of ores. As you may imagine, Alta Nova is like a ore central. And this one is like timbers and saps. If you just look at the map by the number of trees and stuff. But yeah, if you ever wondered where to get various ores and have 1.5 million elder tree timber, uh, this is how you get it. Uh, this is why literally every other player that has a node has probably over a million. Uh, I didn't even know you can have that <laughs> many. I thought it would just like hard cap at some number. It'd be like, yeah, you can't carry anymore. So uh, maybe they'll come up with a use for it one day. Um, if I ever felt like I wanted to power to Guru 50 processing, uh, this is how I'm going to do it. Just process about a million and a half Elder Tree Timbers all the way up to planks and to plywood. You know why you get a lot? Because uh, these aren't really worth much because there's so many of them. And then even at plywood, it, it's very difficult to sell them. And so you basically have to make this your full-time job of babysitting your processing every 20 minutes, every time you max out, just to do that. So maybe one day when a game comes out and I feel like playing that one, I'll just sit here and process all of this for like a few days and see how much of a dent I can make in that one. But until then, it's just going to pile up. The number is going to get bigger and I just get more ores and stuff here. So... These are pretty much the two nodes that have been collecting them for the longest time. Actually, the reason why we have that one as well is because it gives us a sap. And can we find it? Oh yeah, Elder Tree Sap used to be used a lot. The price has gone down, but it used to be good for a bartering item to turn it into a material. But nowadays it's not really. Um, I used to have some nodes going on by Sandgrain and all the way into Pilgrim's Haven for ores, but then took those out because they were expensive. Up here, we used to have a lot of big nodes going on. So there was a secret, well, not really a secret, but big nodes used to be selling for like, what, 10 to 15K each. And then once people figured out that, oh, this is kind of expensive, then everyone started selling fig on the market and the price went down. That's why we took out the nodes, but there's a lot of them if you needed figs for some reason for cooking. Um, yeah, this is how you do it. Get these nodes over here. They're like three CP each times three in the connection. So it used to make a lot of money. Not, a, not anymore. And I believe that's pretty much it for uh, this. The only thing I really have connected nowadays is to Arihaza. We have all of these. Uh, we got the node up to level 10 because I was going for the archaeologist map at one point. And then I realized I just hated it so much. And that was also before I decided I wanted to do the Elton and Histria Achman grind. So I have to set 10. But the nodes that we actually use are these two. So if we look into storage for what I have. I basically gather titanium ore and vanadium ore. Um... The reason why I use these is it's used to craft jewelry and like the mono stuff and buying them is like, it's not expensive. It's just kind of like it adds up. So I figured I'd help like negate some of those costs by having a node on it for vanadium and titanium. Um, this is definitely a node that if you get it for yourself, 
you literally have to know what you're doing with it because it's kind of out of the way to go get it. And um, yeah, so these are one of those special cases where I'm using them for a very specific purpose. So it is kind of like actually out in the middle of nowhere. So I think I covered basically all of that. Um, the other nodes that I have, I guess, is any relevance is over here on Ilya Island. We have the house because we made boat gear and I've just kept this connected because I only have one, uh, like blue boat gear for our Carrick. And that was the cannon that we still didn't even get to plus 10. But yeah, if you ever wondered where to get blue Carrick boat gear, this is the place. And then... You need the materials to upgrade them, which is the Sunset Stones. However, what sucks about it is it's like 12 to, tw I think 12 plus hours to have one cycle complete to get basically one attempt. So you have to have this node basically going 24 seven if you want to do a lot of clicks. And that's kind of tedious. I wish they would lower that cost or the timer. But if you are out in the ocean, here are some of my recommended nodes. You want to get like the ones that have um, basically the excavation. And the reason why you want that is to get the starlight powder. And each of these nodes will give you a different blueprint. So uh, how do I how do I show this? So mostly you want starlight powder, but it does also give you blueprints. And if we look at this. When I had the nodes connected, these are used to craft uh, Karak gear. And you only really need 10, but you can't get the powder alone. You get the blueprints along the side, and you just they just kind of add up over time. And they're kind of long nodes, but Starlight Powder is something you need to get Karak enhancing gear. Um, or the materials to enhance your gear anyway. So... You're going to want to get this, but you just get these blueprints on the side. Just get all four of them if you're going for it, and then you'll be good. But I think that's pretty much it until we get the new region info. And then we'll probably... It's going to open up more stuff over here. And then we'll see if the nodes are worth it then. But with that said, I think we're done. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what nodes do you have connected. And what do you use them for? So a lot of my stuff is mostly for life skilling, as you guys see. Cooking, processing, and gathering are my highest life skills. And I really set my nodes are, they're like super specific for the things I need. So yeah, I would say once again, get the nodes that work for you and your play style. Otherwise, if you're just picking nodes that other content creators have, um, they might not have as much value, so just find things that you think are good. But yeah, that's about it. I've been talking for over 30 minutes straight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's not a super popular one, but if you made it here, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys tomorrow.